Welcome to the Couchboard Podcast, where we naively talk about anything and everything for your listening pleasure. I am Jordan, and with me today, I have Colby and Max. How you guys doing? Hey, doing good. Doing wonderful. Thank you. Excellent. All right, today's going to be a big episode. We are, uh, we're going to be talking about the Bill and Ted series of movies since, as we all know, Face the Music just came out and it was quite the doozy. So we're going to jump into that in a little bit. But first of all, what's been going on, guys? Max, what's up? Um, well, you would know this to a certain degree, Jordan, but uh, I guess not as much in Tucson, but it has been one insanely hot summer here in the Phoenix Valley. I was reading an article the other day that was saying we've had like 50 something days over 110 degrees and yeah. the previous record was like 30 days <laughs> so it's been yeah, really it's... hot and they're saying that it's been the hottest summer since like 1895 well so that's been but actually today it was a high of 100 which uh we were laughing like oh Didn't it's only 100 bad. yeah it feels so good outside <laughs> yeah. now so um so yeah i've been dealing with that um I the Killers came out with a new album last week. I listened huh. to it, or no, it was the week before last week. Um, yeah, I listened to it a couple times. I don't know if either of you guys had a chance to check it out, um, but I thought I it was really good. Um, better than the one that they had before that. Um, I yeah, I was I was pleased. I thought they did a good job of they had some good songs on there. Um, yeah, I'll just check it out. I didn't know they came out with anything. Yeah, yeah they did. I don't know if that. They just had extra extra time on their hands. That's what I would think. Like if you're a musician, like this is like your dream, man. Like you got, you don't have to be like out on the road. You don't have to be touring. Like you've got literally nothing else to do besides like jam at home. So, um, I don't know. I kind of wonder if that's what was going on there. Uh, had they been had they been on hiatus or something, or just hadn't no, released anything? Although, and again, I'm probably gonna butcher this, so uh, I'm hesitant to say. But I think two because like there used to be four of them and really like if you ever like see the band like for the most part it's just brandon flowers and the drummer um i don't know his name he's got like a big beard um and i think like the other two guys in the band like still help to like play the music like when they record an album but i don't think they tour with them i don't know i don't know how involved the other two guys are with like writing music still um so i think it's mostly brandon flowers and that other guy that are still cranking out the music and writing it and producing it which yeah. i don't know i like the killers because they they kind of had like that a little bit of like an 80s feel to them uh, and they, they they're a little bit more unique relative to to other bands so i tip my hat to them i think i think they put out some good stuff some of it's better than 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 some of their other stuff but it is what it is mm-hmm. um I've been following the playoffs. In fact, literally just finished game seven of the Jazz and the Nuggets um, before we hopped on here. And uh, Jazz had a 3-1 lead in the series, and uh, they blew it. And uh, I couldn't be happier. I think, Jordan, you're a Jazz fan. I apologize. I just, I for whatever care. reason, I really dislike the Jazz. <laughs> if if uh, if John Stockton and Carl Malone are playing, then I'm a Jazz fan. But <laughs> besides that, I don't care. Wouldn't it be funny... To like rewind, like bring, set up all the NBA teams again as they were, like in 1996 or something. Like bring all the players back, like as you know, that would be the real in their 50s quarantine <laughs> bubble entertainment that 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 we want. Not the entertainment we deserve, but the one that the entertainment we need. Um, It'd be pretty funny. <laughs> so. And, and what else have I, I've been uh, watching? I think I've said this before. I've been watching the show Ozark. Um, I just finished season two of it. It's pretty good. I like it. I've, I've heard a lot of people say really good things about it. I don't know if I like it as much as what others have told me. Um, it's definitely, I mean, I think everyone compares it to Breaking Bad. I just think Breaking Bad is a much better show. Um, Ozark is still great, but um, Breaking Bad is just much, much better in my opinion. <laughs> Yeah, I've heard I've heard a lot about it. I uh haven't d- dove in. I just I just don't really watch many Netflix shows. I don't know. I just it's just not a go-to for us. Yeah, my 
my complaint with netflix shows and I, i'll be honest with you i probably don't really watch a lot of them either like i feel like there's a ton of shows out there that people talk about that I never got around to watching. I mean, I'm just now getting around to watching Ozark, and that's because there's literally nothing else to to watch for the most part these days. Uh, so that's what it took to get me to watch this show. I just feel like sometimes like Netflix shows like are a little bit like too over the top, uh, like they're a little bit too edgy, and there's like a little bit like too much adult content. And sometimes I'm like, is this? Are we just like doing this for like the sake of like being like for like Not shock uncable. value or yeah. like? Like, does this actually help move the story along or make the the story any better? And I would, for me, I don't think it is, but maybe I'm just more sensitive to that stuff. Um, we watch everything on Netflix with VidAngel to to mm-hmm. filter stuff out, and it's never stopped me from understanding the plot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah well i'm sure yeah like none of that's right which actually speaking of it angel i forgot to mention this i've been watching the chosen as well have either of you guys seen that show mm-hmm. no i've been meaning to it's um fantastic i'm mm-hmm. again of all like the christian entertainment that exists out there this one is really really good like i can even see someone who would be like an atheist and actually uh i I don't know how much they would like this show but i could i think i would think that like the the production value is really good um and and the story is is good and it's interesting so like it's a little bit slow in the first couple episodes but i don't know i've i found it to be a very good show for anyone that's interested in checking it out it's free um so yeah good stuff and then last, this is a long update. Um, <laughs> I bought Chrono Trigger on Steam, and I haven't played it in a long, long time. And it's always like kind of fun to go back and play a video game that you haven't played since like uh, I don't know, in over ten years or something, or something that you really grew up playing like as a teenager. I think it might be my favorite video game actually. It's just uh, it's really, really good, really good story, wow. very well written, way ahead of its time, um, and. Uh, and it's probably just more me like tripping out on the nostalgia, but very, very good game. Chrono Trigger. Check it out. Hmm. I won't. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> Colby, what's going on? Uh, not much. My daughter went to her first day of kindergarten today, so that was fun. Did you cry? I didn't cry, but I debated just going and watching because, <laughs> yeah. you know, I, I, sent, my, I sent my I oldest son to school and I'm like, yeah, whatever go be their problem but like my daughter i'm like mm, i don't think i should let you go <laughs> so oh, that was yeah, tough. it was tough. fun though she was super excited so it went well went really good and actually i know her teacher pretty outgoing very outgoing yep so that's good she'll she'll do well i worry about that with my daughter she's very shy and i'm like nervous for her yeah like making that transition to school because it can be uh you got it. Like you, you thrive if you can be a little extroverted and go out there and make friends and and all that. So yeah, my kids seem to be pretty extroverted with their peers. Not so much with adults, but but with their peers, they they do okay. Adults are the worst. Yeah, <laughs> they get it from their parents. They just have a distrust of their parents, and that extends to all adults. Oh, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. They're like these these people are gonna be just yeah. as bad as those old people I live with. <laughs> so yep that's how it goes um we also i was i was grasping for for anything we're, we're really not doing much besides that we're just we're just working <laughs> my wife and i are both just working we watched um iq the other night an old old romantic comedy um hmm. if you've uh, ever heard of it meg ryan tim robbins walter Matthau. it's clever it's a little cheesy but it's it's a good one. And uh, we watched The Sound of Music as well not that long ago, which it's fun to go back and watch that again after not having seen it since, like, I was 10 or something. So That's, I don't know if I could. I still don't know if I could bring myself to watch that movie again. I always, what? like, remember, like, she makes clothes out of the curtains, and I'm like, these kids look ridiculous Yeah, in these curtain clothes. They don't look good. Curtain cl- they're not even so just wonderful. curtain clothes. They're curtain lederhosen like it's pretty uh they're they're yeah they're pretty intense go on that's that's a classical I know. musical i'm thinking of wearing that as a costume for halloween 
sorry real quick speaking of old movies i was forced to i forgot to mention i was not no i was forced to watch uh, it was uh emily's turn to pick a movie um on sunday and she picked dirty dancing which i'd never seen before <laughs> they're doing a second one what it? wait there's a second one well no, they're coming out with yeah. it so, oh i don't well, know that. I don't, I don't know when but well what's uh patrick swayze is that the main character yeah am i getting that name right well he he passed away yep like mm-hmm. 10 years ago or something like that and what's her uh, name i don't remember the from ferris bueller yeah i don't remember her name but she does she hasn't acted in years i feel like yeah it's weird we were actually like kind of talking about that like where what happened to these people and uh, patrick swayze died and i don't know i feel like i only know that that actress from ferris bueller and i, I knew she was in dirty dancing but I don't know what else she's also in that. the original red dawn which is a good movie uh, I haven't seen the original Red Dawn. I haven't seen the new one either because I heard the new one was terrible. But I heard the original is pretty good. The original is pretty good. I thought they were both both pretty good. I don't remember the second Can't one. complain. Anyway. So, uh, yeah. That's uh, basically what's been going on with us. We made uh, Winger's Ultimate Amazing Sauce. Homemade. For fun. Mm-hmm. What well, goes uh-huh. into that sauce? It's I, mostly I just... I have, like, no concept of how you make a wing sauce. It's mostly just, like... Vinegar. Frank's wing... Like, you just you have to look up a copycat recipe. Right. And so there's lots of different variations, but the one we used had Frank's wing sauce and then brown sugar and corn syrup and some other things. Vinegar. Do sometimes they have, like, butter in them, or am I making this up? Uh, I don't think this one does. For some reason, I feel like butter and Frank red hot i don't know i could be wrong on this i don't know anything again i don't know anything fun is like sticky it's not like real wing sauce it's more like a glaze anyway so that's uh nice that's about it with us cool 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 um let's see i i continue to make some progress on the bunk beds (laughs) it is getting there uh but they are they are where are the bunk beds are they in your garage where are they where are they living (laughs) <laughs> no, they're in the roof. They're up in. I know up for in the, a fact. Their bedroom. You wouldn't still be married if they've been in your living room this entire time. <laughs> no, they're in the. They're in their bedroom. They're. They're built in, uh, and they are sleeping on them right now. So, no, they're. I mean, they, I say this every time because I progress so, so incremental each time. But they they have been functional for a, quite some time. So. I'll get some pit- pictures up on the gram and show you all of my n- n- novice woodworking skills. Um, but anyway, but uh, besides that, we did watch a pretty exciting movie. Uh, it's called Delt, more or less a documentary. Um, it's on Hulu. Check it out. It's very interesting. Uh, it's about this guy who is a card mechanic. And so, like, based on how he shuffles uh, a card deck, he can fix, you know, poker games or whatever, blackjack or, you know, whatever it is that he is playing at. And um, there's, a, there's a little twist to the movie. I won't give it away. But it's, it is a really interesting, really interesting show just because he can do so, such almost magical things with, with the cards, you know, he's dealing them, but he's like, uh, you just have to watch it. It's, it, uh, it's one of those where it's like, you know, close up magic where you're watching it and you're like, I know what he just did. I saw what he did, but I have no idea how he did it. But then it's nice. He, he like explains to you how he, um, does some of the magic. So it's pretty cool. So, Hmm. Definitely re- recommend. It's on Hulu. You're gonna become Delt. a new Job. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. I, but it. But it, it's funny. He keeps like he says he has like tens of thousands of card decks in his house, and he shows you to his, some of his. Uh, oh, his name and the guy's name is Richard Turner. Uh, that's his hmm. name, and uh, he, it made me want to go get uh, some cards and start to learn to shuffle the way he does. It's pretty fascinating i gotta say like watching magicians it is mind-blowing the stuff that they can do like and i just like and like i think like the the uh, so many people like just go oh well, they like sold their soul to the devil like that's the only way they can do it and it's like no like they just have like they're like insanely like 
practiced yeah. and like meticulous and like that's it's just crazy yeah. to me how they do some of that stuff it's awesome this is devil's magic <laughs> <laughs> he has like i said he has like tens of thousands of card decks throughout his house and he he it's almost like a nervous tick like wherever he goes he takes them and he's like shuffling them in his hand like one hand at a time shuffling it's is he married incredible. he's married he's got a, a kid yeah but um on top of it he he says he works with cards 16 hours a day. So it's like, okay, well, yeah, what? no wonder like you're uh, award winning in your in your work. That's crazy. Yeah. Like every day. <laughs> pretty I wish, pretty I, wish I could be that passionate about something. I don't. That's he yeah, literally that's just does the cards and sleeps. <laughs> that's all you've got in your life is cards. Yeah. Well, I mean, he put, you know, he puts on a variety of show, shows and as I said, there is a twist that will blow your mind right out of your skull anyway well let's jump right into the topic I th- unless there's anything else i think we can get moving on some bill and ted's what do you guys think let's do it okay well uh I-, I don't think we can jump right into face the music i think we gotta start at the beginning um let's touch base with the first movie excellent adventure it was a riot it was great it was a good movie um i didn't i saw it many many years after it came out because i was a wee babe when it did what what were your guys's so we'll just do a quick run through of uh, excellent adventure someone volunteer first tell us what excellent adventure was all about who wants to take that i'll do it i guess <laughs> although truth be told uh i saw it probably like a year ago and i only rewatched the end um right. you're out colby <laughs> colby you're up <laughs> but um, i think max can take it yeah so now i'm gonna get their names all um mixed up i can never keep their names straight which one's keanu ted yeah he's dead okay yep. so yeah um so ted's dad wants him to wants to ship him off to the military um which is going to happen if he fails his history class which he's on target for failing and the only way they can pass is if they really knock out their final history presentation so bill and ted are like kind of like acing their history presentation is way beyond their abilities but fortunately a guy named rufus comes from the future in a phone booth and comes to intervene and the reason why he intervenes which i can't remember at what point of the movie he explains all this to them but basically if they don't pass their history class and stay together they'll never become they'll never finish or they'll never achieve their full potential of their band wild stallions which will heal the world and bring about universal peace and align the planets and all those wonderful things so to help them ace their history presentation he lets them use his time traveling phone booth and they travel through time gathering up people like Genghis Khan, Joan of Arc, Abraham Lincoln, and they bring them all to their final high school presentation. And that final presentation that they give is just so good. It's one of my, it's just, a, it's it's super fun. It's like, it's kind of heartwarming. I don't know what, what, to, what, how exactly to put my finger on why I love like their final presentation so much, but it, it's really good. So anyways, mm-hmm. They pass the presentation and they get to keep their band Wild Stallions. So, yeah. How was that? Well, uh, I mean, you can tell you haven't seen it in a while. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was perfect. That was good. Um, good run through. So uh, that started uh, that started them off on this this sort of time traveling escapades and things. Before we jump into the next movie. So, Max, you said you like the their presentation, their final presentation. Yep. What are some other memorable moments from that movie that, that uh, stand out to you after all these years? Hey, Missy. <laughs> I mean, Mom. <laughs> yeah. Over and over. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love, like... That part's Missy's, like, one Missy's of the best awesome. characters in the movie. She is. <laughs> She's so good. And <laughs> yeah. yeah. She just, like, doesn't care about literally anything. She's totally oblivious. She's, like a blatant gold digger and does not care. Like <laughs> yeah. it's pretty good. Yeah. No, yeah, she's funny. I, uh, I always thought, uh, <laughs> so they go and they pick up Napoleon first, but by accident, they didn't really mean to. Um, and so they keep a, they, Ted gives Napoleon to his younger brother to take care of while they go and get other historical figures. But 
just the way that Napoleon, like, because he can't speak English, um, right? But how he's just, he goes, he gets ice cream with them at like the, the mall, and, yeah. <laughs> and like goes to the water park by himself, <laughs> and like just the way he's like, he he's just you know drinking it all in, like he's just loving like this new world he's in, pushing the kids out of the way, going up the slides and stuff. Like it's just funny to to watch him experience San Dimas. Yeah, he's one of my favorite parts too, and because he has like. He's so entitled and a jerk. And so like, you know, when they're bowling and somebody's about to bowl right next to him, he puts his hands up and goes, ah! <laughs> like makes him stop so that he can bowl. <laughs> like it's, it's oh, classic. Oh man. Good stuff. And then he throws the ball like a complete gutter ball and just lays there in the lane yelling <laughs> over and over profanities just in French. Sweat. Yeah. It was pretty good. It is good. I mean, each, each, each of the characters have their moments. Uh, I think they highlight different scenes based on who they were. When they all go to the mall to experience San Dimas and then they all start getting into trouble and stuff. Uh, but I do love Beethoven uh, jumping onto all those pianos and he starts, he, he plays extreme song, play with, uh, play with me. And it's just, just that song kicks everything off and everything just falls apart and they get taken to jail. But yeah, I like Genghis Khan taking out security guards in the sporting goods store. Yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah. Good, good stuff. All right. Last question. Here is a is going back to our time travel episode. Max, now we get to hear from your brain. <laughs> so Joan of Arc, while she's doing the presentation, she's sword fighting with Bill. And mm-hmm. Ted is explaining all the things that Joan of Arc did to overthrow the English. So but she hadn't done it yet. Right yeah. when she, right when they picked her up, she was presumably praying for the first time, committing herself to help lead the, the French to victory. And right at the end of what she accomplished, she was killed. So if she's still alive, she hasn't accomplished it yet, right? Yeah. So does Ted talking about it, how does it affect Joan actually going back and doing it? Does Would she have done it without hearing what Ted was saying? Do you think, I can't remember, does she understand English in the in the movie? Absolutely. Oh, that's a good point. <laughs> she speaks French, I think. Yeah, yeah, so there's my answer to your question. It doesn't affect. And if even if she did understand, right. and if nothing else, that now she knows her potential. Now she knows what she can achieve, and so she'll go do it. I don't think it would make much of a difference. Really, the only thing that would make a difference is removing her from... I don't even want to guess the year that Joan of Arc um, <laughs> lived, but removing her from there and taking her to San Dimas, California to... <laughs> hang out with bill and ted and then sending her back like i think that would that's really the ultimate yeah uh, they might have created a time paradox of sorts maybe maybe all right cool well that is excellent adventure cool it was a good movie i think it really so good i think i've seen that one the most and that's kind of where really grew to love i mean i in general i think keanu reeves is probably my favorite actor so i'd probably you know like these movies no matter what but that was a good movie just like a classic, just silly, stupid movie. I mean, they're a bunch of surfer type dudes, just, uh, you know, just silly guys. And, and they make uh, make for a good time. I think why it works is because, like, they are so stupid and it is, like, kind of mind-numbing. But it's also not mind-numbing because you're kind of getting, like, a little bit of, like, a history lesson all at the same time. And so it's, like, those two opposites of, like yeah, there's like some intellectual stuff and there's just some really stupid stuff. And like somehow like you merge those two worlds together and it just works. Um, And (laughs) there's a million other probably examples of how that doesn't work, but somehow they just uh, struck gold with this movie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Classic fish out of water tale. Bingo. And uh, yeah, it gets makes for, for big laughs, especially because like Bill and Ted are, like you can do the fish out of water tale with all the historical figures coming to modern times, and Billy the Kid is dealing with the complexities of time travel with the utmost of ease. But <laughs> but then you have Bill and Ted, who are these complete morons trying to navigate like real life in other times that they know nothing about, and so it's like a two way fish out of water story. Mm-hmm. Yep, really good. All right, Colby, you're up. Give us a plot <laughs> of Bogus Journey. <clears throat> Well, Bogus Journey is just a hoot. I watched it again in preparation for this. And that one I haven't watched in like a really, really, really long time. And it's actually way funnier than I remember. Yeah. Having watched it again. That's what I thought. 
Yeah, I love I loved that one. I feel like the end it was a little much and, and dragged on, but like everything before the very end and the climax of the film, I thought was phenomenal. So, <clears throat> um, let's see. We start out with Hans from the Mighty Ducks <laughs> in the future comes in to Rufus's class where he's teaching people with historical figures and he like has this evil plan to destroy Bill and Ted because he thinks they're idiots, which I don't know why this is so bad because he's right, (laughs) but he creates these evil robot versions of Bill and Ted who are identical um, to them and act just like them who will go back in time and kill Bill and Ted and ruin their amazing song that unites the world. So Rufus takes off to go help them to chase after the robots and try and stop them. But we don't see him for a while. The robots come to San Dimas in 1989 or whenever it is. I think it's 89. Maybe it's 1991. I can't I think remember. 89 but was the original original. I think it was right. a couple of years later. I think it was, I think it was 1991. And, uh, they show up and they – I'm trying to remember the, the order they do things. They basically – Bill and Ted have proposed to the princesses, so they're getting married. But the robots show up and, like, break off the engagement or really mean to the girls. Then they kill Bill and Ted. They throw them off of a cliff. And then they go back to their place and just trash it and hang out. So Bill and Ted are dead and death comes to collect them. They give – death a wedgie and run away <laughs> apparently that works for death so, so then they they take off and uh i can't remember where they go oh they go back home first they yeah. possess they possess ted's dad in the police department to try and convince <laughs> the police that somebody has killed them with identical robots that doesn't work so then they go back to the house where missy is having a seance with her friends calling on spirits so they get to show themselves and say like these evil robot robots killed us or whatever. Missy thinks they're demons. So she starts this chant to exile them back to hell. And so Bill and Ted are then exiled back to hell. And once in hell, they get pulled in to their own personal hell, which is like this maze with all these doors. And it's like they're the military Academy kissing your grandma, like a creepy childhood toy that are tormenting them. Uh, so they to escape they they take death up on his original offer to play him in a game to escape they beat death at like battleship Battleship. and clue and foosball yeah and uh (laughs) so he has to take them back and is like at their service he needs them and they need they decide the way to destroy the robots is to build good robots so death takes them to heaven to find a scientist to build good robots they find station who is an alien scientist in a giant rubber suit (laughs) that (laughs) yeah that they take back to san dimas and go to a hardware store and get all these parts and build these robots they show up at the battle of the bands where they're supposed to play their huge big song and the robots fight and kill the evil robots but then the original bad guy from the future shows up and they do the whole well, I'll go back after this confrontation and put something here so I have it now, which completely is a paradox and doesn't work. But they do that over and over till they beat him. And then the manager of the Battle of Bands reveals themselves reveals herself to actually be Rufus, who was putting them on stage to get them because they were terrible before. But he was going to put them on stage anyway because he knows what the future is. And then... I think at the very end, they decide we actually don't know how to play our instruments. So they use the time machine and go travel for a while and put themselves through intensive guitar training and come back and play like an amazing song. And death is their bassist. (laughs) And that is their band that goes on forever to be amazing. You guys, you guys gave some good overviews. If I have to take on face the music, (laughs) I'm not going to do as well. That was perfect. Uh, Yeah. I rewatched it because I definitely have seen Excellent Adventure more than Bogus Journey. And mm-hmm. rewatching it, I, just, I felt like Bogus Journey was just, I don't know if it was a lot funnier or if it just a lot funnier than Excellent Adventure or just a lot funnier than it when I first saw it. But uh, I definitely liked it a lot more. Um, 
I, I don't know. There's just a lot more part. Like when they go to hell, like there's just so many things that are just hilarious. Like <laughs> how, how, how they can't ever stand up all the way in hell. Like I, I yeah. felt like they had a lot of good details like that, that like it's funny, but it also makes you think, you know, it's just, it was just yeah. the, a good representation of what hell would be. And uh, <laughs> same with uh, Alex, uh, not Alex. Well, Alex Winter plays his grandma when he's a boy yeah. in, in his own personal hell where <laughs> she has to give him a kiss and stuff. Just funny yeah. stuff. Where they show that silhouette of the grandma coming down the hallway. It's pretty <laughs> yeah. creepy. It's yeah. like way scarier than the general or the children's toy. I forget yeah. what did like Satan do for them and like hell. I just like love that line where he's like, hey, you're you're a pretty all right guy. You get like a bad rap. Like, <laughs> Thanks, thanks a lot. No, he didn't really do anything. They ask him if they can leave, and he says, you can leave, but yeah. he just sends them to their personal yeah. Yeah. labyrinth like, of hell. Oh, cool. Like, you know, yeah. Yeah. You're, you're, an all, you're an all right guy. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty yeah. funny. So, I don't know. What other uh, memorable moments do you guys have? Anything from Bogus Journey? I think, uh, well, quick question about Station. I feel like Station, the the word Station was mentioned before, like, they even knew who Station was or something. I felt like, I was like, did I miss something? Mm-hmm. I feel like the, the the name or, like, the the word came up earlier in the movie before they went to heaven and met Station. Um, I don't remember. It did, but I... I didn't... Oh, the, the robots are saying it, I, I think. I think, right. I think when they do the guitar and they're like, meow, meow, I think they would say, like, Station sometimes. Huh. That was like uh, that was interesting, but um, yeah, um, the big detail Colby left out of his synopsis was how the two station scientists like jumped together <laughs> into like this gross blob and then turned into like a giant <laughs> station. That was pretty disturbing. Random. But it was just random. It was like it was, what? yeah, <laughs> and then I just like love him like sitting in like the back of like the van and he's just like rummaging around and like through everything and just like yeah. furiously building these robots so uh that was kind of funny i kind of disagree with you guys um i remember not loving bogus journey and i rewatched and rewatching it over the weekend i was it was about the same like it, it definitely has its funny moments but when i compare it to excellent adventure like i think excellent adventure is is much much better in my opinion but bogus journey is just like yeah it's fine i don't really have any strong opinions on it huh i feel like bogus journey is actually funnier whoa but but less original um i don't know that's just me and maybe it's just that i've seen the first one so many times and haven't seen the second one as many i couldn't tell if it was funnier than excellent adventure or like i said if it was just funnier than i first remember it but uh, i I liked it for sure you know and speaking of station and stuff i thought i thought the uh i don't know who the costume or Muppet designer was I don't know what you call that but I thought they did pretty good with like the duplicates of themselves like that's not necessarily the costume design but just the animatronics of them tearing their face off I thought that was pretty well shot shot and you know cut so that it it kind of looked like they were actually doing the motions of tearing their face off and like with them when the duplicates uh, when the bad evil robots are taking them off to to kill them like i felt like it was pretty seamless like a lot of times it's like okay that's a that's a double like you can see that like that's uh you know just their stunt double or whatever uh but i thought they did a pretty good job there and then then just with station the robots the bill and ted robots the good ones they were you know pretty passable they didn't look i mean you could tell there were people in the suits but i don't think that it was like cringy or anything I thought it looked pretty good yeah, I agree. My favorite part of Bogus Journey is death. I think he's okay. easily the best part. Yeah. Um, when true. they challenge it into a game and he loses over and over and over and gets increasingly upset about it. 709? <clears throat> it's just classic. Yeah. <laughs> Put in his little accent. I said plum. <laughs> yeah. You have uh... sunk my battleship. ship. <laughs> it's just great. I love death. He's the best. And, like, he has to, like, explain to everybody, like, they melvined me. Like, he's like, you know, yeah. uh, I feel so stupid that these morons got the better of me. Yeah. Anyway, so death is, is pretty unbeatable. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. Anything else to say about uh, Bogus Journey? 
I think we nope. covered it all in its entirety. Uh, Missy, of course, ends up yeah. with uh, with uh, <laughs> Bill's dad. Uh, no, Ted's dad. Didn't even like register for me at first. Like I didn't even realize that she was with like a different dad, and then like I laughed. And I was like, <laughs> oh yeah, like she switched dads. Okay, yeah, that is pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. Remember when Missy divorced her dad and married mine? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just and and. and Bill's dad's all depressed and like just right yeah yeah oh that's funny um Good all stuff. right well so since this is a new release we will we'll, we'll have a spoilers and non-spoilers section to uh to the face the music review <sighs> to a, the best uh, kind of rundown i can so as we've as we heard from uh, excellent adventure the wild stallions were supposed to write the greatest song of all time that would you you know bring peace to the universe and and uh, harmony and yada yada and now as the entire title kind of implies it's their time to finally produce this song uh, to make the world a better peaceful place and it's been some I don't know 20 I think well I think it kind of keeps up I think the movies have were meant to take place in the time they were made so i think 89 and then 91 uh and then this is 2020 so uh they're whatever 29 years older from the last movie and they still haven't made this song and they've had you know after bogus journey they they their band was doing great with death and they were having a really great time making music but then their their music just kind of fell off as they searched and they tried as best they could to to make this peaceful song or whatever and they just couldn't they haven't come up with it and they get brought to the future and asked where is this song like we believe that the world's going to end or the universe is going to end because you haven't put together the song yet and so that's where a lot of hilarity ensues where they have to go around uh, trying to figure out how to save their lives, save the universe, save their marriages. I think uh, that's about it. High level, how do you think it compares to the previous two movies? Do you think, it, how do you think it compares? And do you think they should have done another one? We're doing spoiler free right now? Yep. Okay. I honestly was a little disappointed. So I, maybe I need to watch it again or something, but I don't think it quite uh, lives up to the others. But I'm still glad they made it. Like, yeah, you know, it, it's definitely worth a watch. It's just not quite like the others. Yeah, I was gonna say I I liked it. I was I was pretty surprised um, by how much I ended up liking it. Uh, it was funnier than I thought it was going to be, and the story worked. Like it was just kind of goofy, and it's hard for me to give more reasons why without venturing into spoilers. But um, it's no excellent adventure for me. But I definitely think I probably liked it more than Bogus Journey. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, I really liked it. I thought it, I was, uh, happy. They, you know, more or less stuck to their guns as far as releasing it, even though it's not really out in theaters. I, I checked yesterday. I had only made like 1.5 million from theaters, which is sad, <laughs> very disappointing. Like as far as box offices go, but I'm, that didn't include streaming, uh, numbers at all. So, um, I, I'm hoping, because I, I, I really, as I said, I love uh, Keanu, Keanu Reeves and Alex Winter. You know, I like him from these movies. He's not done many other acting things, uh, movie acting things. But, um, you know, so I, I just like the series, so I'm just hoping it does well. But um, overall, I, I liked it. Like, it took, I'd say, the first, I don't know, act or so, I was kind of like, eh know here but it really started to pick up steam and and uh, uh i think by the end it kind of tied everything together and and it was uh, I, I liked it I, I did one thing that i missed in it um was keanu in the first two movies he just has like this really goofy like stupid silly smile that is just like the best and it's so like charming and it's just so funny and he really didn't do that ever um in this new one like he really didn't like do like that stupid smile that he would always like do yeah. whenever he said anything so that was a, kind of like a little bit of a which is kind of funny to think about because like when i think of keanu reeves i don't think of a guy who goes around like doing this big stupid smile but he did it so much in the first two movies and yeah. you know i think 
I don't know. I just felt like that was a part of his character that was I was sad to see go. Like everything else was fine. Everything else was similar. But yeah, what's fu- I mean, and and this is in many previews, but you see different versions of Bill and Ted. They they kind of go and visit different times and different versions of themselves. And I thought Keanu did a lot better in those alternate versions of himself than in his actual portrayal of sure. of Ted. That was like the best part of the movie, in my opinion. And I don't want to yeah. get too much into the spoilers, yeah. but like, I thought like that was like, for me, is what like made the movie work so well was yeah. just like seeing just like different flavors of Bill and Ted. And they were all, I thought they were all quite funny. And like the way they looked was very surprising to me each time. Like, and I don't know if I really realized like that they were going to see like so many like different variations of themselves, but uh, mm-hmm. I love that part of the movie it was really funny. Yeah. And then but I, d- I did think that uh, Alex Winter, as far as his acting was like spot on to the last movies, you know, like I felt like he mm-hmm. just kind of nailed it. Like, I mean, throughout the entire movie. He also looks exactly the same. Yeah. yeah. He like I, has barely aged since. Then. I know. Like Keanu, you can tell has aged. And again, it's not a knock on him, but like it was just almost kind of weird how similar Alex Winters looked to his original self. I was like, and I just watched Bogus Journey. I watched them both in the same day. And I was like, wow, he hasn't changed a bit. <laughs> yeah. Who knows if, if this plays into it. But we've seen Keanu in so many recent movies where he's, you know, especially the John Wicks where he has a beard. And he, he he's kind of, you know, he has longer hair in those. But uh, just the beard, it just drastically changes his face. And in this, he was clean shaven for the most of it, you know, in his normal Ted self. And so I think that just kind of threw things off as far as like what you've most recently pictured Keanu as. I don't know. I think for it being a 29 year gap, I think they did good um, with picking up these characters and starting again. Yeah, I agree. Agreed. Cool. Cool. Do you think it was a good way to bring back the movie? Do you think this, this, um, potential cap to the story was a good way to do it or should they have done something sooner no i like this yeah i thought it was fine i don't yeah. i don't know if like an older version of bill and ted would have i think like bogus journey I, I i i'm i'm speaking for myself here and then i'm generalizing across other people assuming they think like me which is always a dangerous assumption to make but i'm thinking like i think maybe bogus journey some people thought they kind of it kind of wore out its welcome um and so it was nice to kind of have like this big long break and then I think they did a good job of, mm-hmm. yeah, there, there was, again, without getting into, spo- maybe we should just need to hurry up and get into to spoilers so sure. we can talk more about, all right, we're going into spoilers. So wait, wait, I will say before one more thought, I, I think they needed the gap because there's no story like right in excellent adventure. They travel through time in bogus journey. They go to heaven and hell and they, there's like no other story for them until there's the gap in time, yeah. which becomes the plot device. So, yeah, yeah, I think that was necessary and, and a good way to go about it. Okay, we can go into spoilers. So what, what, before we do, what would we rate it? I think I... So here's the thing. like If it were like a standalone movie without like the history of Bill and Ted, I would probably give it like a three or a three and a half stars. But I think like because it has the old legacy of Bill and Ted behind it, I'd give it like three and a half or four stars. Yeah. Colby? Well, see, that y- your whole rating system just ba- <laughs> baffles me because like... I apparently didn't like it as much as you, but I wouldn't give it three stars. And maybe I just put a little more on the legacy of Bill and Ted to to make up for oh, you it. Go, but I'd probably going, give it... You're going higher? Yeah, I mean, I'd give it a... Well, because if a movie had three stars, I wouldn't watch it, right? But I think I think people should watch this one because it's good. So I'd give it maybe a five and a half or six. Oh, I'm talking about a, out of five. I'm talking oh. like... Three and a half stars out of so like a seven. Well, who, or an who does eight. it out? Who does it out of five? They're all out of five. Who gives yeah, ten stars? You know, it's always five stars. <laughs> this is why we didn't invite him to the time travel episode. <laughs> yeah, five stars. Uh, okay, go well, around tomatoes. Out of five go, stars. Go find me I'd one give person a... that's giving out ten <laughs> stars. I don't think it exists. It's either five oh, stars man. or out of ten. I'm correcting you on this. And. Uh, Someone yeah. fact check me. Well, I wouldn't give it stars then. I would give it a score out of ten. There you go. Give it a score then. Don't give it stars. Five and a half or six. Uh, oh wow, well, that's critical. That's true. mean. Yeah. Well, uh, well, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. I'm 
a solid nine and a half. Wow. <laughs> no, uh, no, I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't go that. High. I'd say, I'd say nine, just because, just because I like uh, Bill and Ted movies. Because you love Keanu. <laughs> I love Keanu. He's the best. Yeah, this is nine. The John Wick series, they're tense. They're tense. So you know they are. All right, cool, good. Now we are entering spoiler section. Um, I don't know what else. What else should we, should we say? <laughs> Do about? you want to summarize the? I guess the plot. Oh, um, sure. Or is it even so necessary? The, I guess if oh, whatever. Yeah. Well, with the plot, I mean, from here it, it, they so they do they need to discover the story or the song, and when they're pulled into the future, they're given like seventy seven minutes to. That's when it's been prophesied that they will be playing this this song. So they only have 77 minutes, and you think, well, that's fine. They've got a time-traveling device, which is true. But for some reason, well, I guess this is the same thing in Excellent Adventure. The, even if they time travel, the time in San Dimas or whatever the present time is, it keeps ticking. So they can go back in time or go forward in time. But the minutes are still getting ticked off uh, in the present. And so um, so they're trying to scramble to figure out how to yeah, save their marriage uh, because the, some of their future selves said that their wives leave them. But on top of that, they're trying to figure out how to write this song. And so they go into the future because they think, well, let's try and just steal the song from ourselves in the future because if we must have written the song in the future. And so they try and each time they go... Uh, into the future they never get it their 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 future selves like are mad at them because they let them their uh their marriages fall apart and they just weren't good they weren't good enough for their wives and so they their marriages fell apart their kids uh, you know have left and they're not uh so their future selves are still mad at them which is funny like the first time uh, they go see their future self two years in the future. They're playing at like a dive bar, which is which is kind of funny. Pretty funny when Ted gets in a fight with himself and like yeah, that it's just <laughs> that that was where I was like, oh okay, Keanu Keanu's doing a really good job. Like this is funny, like watching him play someone else, a different version of himself. Yeah. Then the second time they go five years in the future and their selves are like nice to them now and they're like oh yeah here here's the song you're gonna love it and they listen and they're like wow this is magical come to find out um i don't know this isn't necessarily a plot this is really just telling the the story of the movie but each time they meet with their future selves they are deceived or or something where their future selves don't want to give them the song um and so they're they never really receive the song except for the last time. But it turns out while Bill and Ted are going into the future, trying to find the song, their daughters um, are also trying to go into the past to get some uh, iconic musical figures to put together the songs, put together the song, help their dads put together the song. And so um, they get who they get uh, Louis Armstrong, Jimi Hendrix, Mozart, Mozart, some other, a classical (laughs) Chinese person. And then the, cave woman i don't know anyway so they all come together in and the future or at the time that the song was supposed to take place and they manage through strange series of events honestly i don't really understand it but um uh they manage to pull this song off that plays throughout all time and all history and 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 all around the worlds and um Everyone contributes to playing the song. And that's what makes uh, world peace, universal peace, is because everyone contributes to this magical um, song. And so the world is saved. So but the big twist is that Bill and Ted don't really write, ever end up writing the song. It's their daughters that right. write right. the song and they play, um, which I thought was like, I, I like their daughters. I thought that was like a fun little little twist um although it just like kind of conflicted with uh you know like i feel like in bill and ted's excellent adventure like rufus talks about how much he likes listening to their music and how like everyone listens to their music like to me there was no like like in in this new one they're like oh like maybe he like misunderstood like the prophecy or whatever like but like there was no 
doubt about it in excellent adventure like they had statues of bill and ted like they listened to their music they loved their music like it was not a question mark it was an absolute certainty and so anyway well that's because in 2020 they made the best song of all time see so the daughters made the song right but bill and ted performed it i guess you could you could make that argument yeah they're just but then what kind of what kind of uh dads are they where they're like kind of like Taking, taking all like, the fame and glory for their daughter's work. Uh, well, well, you could say that maybe the daughters go on to be producers and Bill and Ted are still the uh, maybe. music makers. I don't know. But yeah, uh, and at the same time, all this is going on. The, the universe is collapsing on itself and world figures are being sent in, back into the past and, and they're shifting all over the place. That was something funny that um, I kind of thought was was clever was uh, it's, it was like kid cuddy rapper from today changes places with jesus and so then kid cuddy's in the in the present tense and he's like he's like the one that's most into like time travel stuff and like yeah has all the knowledge essentially yeah. and like it turns out like oh it's it's jesus like in th- uh, in someone else's body like for a moment but he, in the end he gets back to <laughs> his own so i thought that was funny yes clever that was funny You've, we no. haven't talked about dennis yet Den- dennis was hilarious like <laughs> i loved dennis like he was like he's like the so they in the i can't even remember why but like this uh woman in the future rufus's wife sends like this cyborg robot to go kill bill and ted because uh, for whatever reason she thinks that will solve her problems i don't remember what her logic or rationale for that was if they don't write the song then killing them will it's just like a sacrifice like, almost still yeah it'll still save the universe i still don't understand that because they were so iconic they would kind of be like a martyr oh to the i cause, see what you're saying you okay know. yeah that makes sense well i mean kind of i mean I, I can get the, <laughs> it does the logic but... there yeah <laughs> like i can i can it's villain ted though you just gotta roll with it yeah um but yeah, Dennis is like the cyborg that she sent to like chase them through time and kill him. And he looks like scary and like menacing, but he just like turns out to be like this nerdy, dorky, weird guy that likes to dance and is just like kind of very sentimental. Um, I thought he was funny. I thought he was a great. He was just like so weird. And usually I don't really like weird stuff like that, but like it just somehow worked for me. It was just the very the first time, like the whole time you're seeing him, he is like a menacing figure. And yeah. then the first time he like really tries to uh, kill them, he misses Bill and Ted and shoots their uh, Ted dad, kills his dad, and he's, he's just like, yeah. oh oh no, because <laughs> he knows he screwed up like his job, and yeah. Then from then on, he becomes more of a person than like this this killing robot, and it's really funny. I love the Bill and Ted movies because like even the people that are supposed to be extremely competent turn out to be hyper incompetent. <laughs> like yeah. death is completely incompetent. <laughs> yeah. I love uh, that. Yeah. And Dennis is completely incompetent at his job. Like everyone is stupid in these movies. <laughs> even incredibly smart people just end up being really silly and frivolous. <laughs> so that is, that is pretty fun in, in all of the movies. I didn't love Dennis that much. Like the first and second time when he shoots people and he goes, oh oh and like he first breaks that persona of being menacing i thought those were funny after that i thought he didn't really serve a lot of a purpose um yeah no he he, he'd kind of there he's comedic relief <laughs> he, i totally agree with you i it was his purpose was to bring everybody to hell right and so that so worked find out death and yeah which yeah, i like true i thought the, the stuff with death was like pretty good i don't know i thought like it it, their whole like argument with him like kind of went on too long and wore out its welcome but it was good to see him again and good to see them make yeah. amends and play together i really liked uh i really liked christian shawl as kelly yeah i thought she was uh, i love her as an actress she's, she's just so. hilarious and yeah the whole time she, she's basically she's basically on her phone arguing with her mom like the entire yeah. time it's pretty funny yeah yeah she's good i haven't seen her in a while so it was good to see her again and um yeah She's doing a lot of voice acting stuff. Oh, really? Yeah, she is. Yep. Bob's Burgers. It's a big mm-hmm. one. She's great yep. in there. <laughs> she is. Louise. Yes. Yeah. So, oh, oh, yes. Go ahead. I was just going to say, one thing I didn't love about the movie is, like, 
you should like a movie like that like there is like the song that you're like waiting for at the end is like really good and like fun to listen to like the song was just kind of like mediocre if you ask me like and i was also kind of like bummed like there was like no singing with it it was just like this like weird random mishmash of different instruments and stuff and it just wasn't like anything spectacular to me so i was just i don't know i was like kind of like you just don't get it max do you (laughs) (laughs) the point was that everyone played it together (laughs) exactly oh is that the point (laughs) they say it yeah they say that they, uh, I one of the daughters, over my head. but I agree. I was ex- I was expecting something a little more spectacular to him. <laughs> Though yeah, that was funny it. when when they put on the headphones and they think they're listening to the greatest song, and it just <laughs> turns out to be Dave Grohl's yeah. latest latest song. That was funny. <laughs> yeah. that, was that was like one of my favorite parts when like you you're just like kind of like wondering what's going on, and then like they open the door and like Dave Grohl's there, and he's like, "What are you guys doing in my house?" And it's just like, "Oh god." <laughs> Which we yeah. just have to talk about. Wasn't like Keanu wearing like a a, a top hat or something like that? Like, <laughs> they were both just... dressed like weird glam rockers. It was weird. Yeah, <laughs> it was amazing. It was. It they was had so British weird. accents at that point. Yeah, yeah, but it was, was it was just clever at that point because it's like, you know, because they're having their side conversation. That, oh yeah, these these future us's are a lot cooler than the last yeah. ones because they're trying to deceive their past selves um so i i like that and but the whole time you're like what is going on like something is up here but it seems like everything's playing out perfectly but but something's wrong so so i don't get did did the really old bill and ted they actually had the song right yeah i think i assume so yeah that was a little confusing too i was like i was assuming that they were still yanking their chains at that point um but i think i think i think they had good intentions and they actually had the song and so the time travel thing here in the first movie, like they're just traveling in a straight line through time, right? They're going yep. back and bringing people to the same. In this one, there's like branching realities in time. Is that right? It, yeah. Because if they do write the song, then even their first future self should have the song. But they well, don't. It's only until they, they find their really old selves that they have the song. Yeah, I think well, I think a lot of it is tied to their wives, with with their wives also time traveling, and trying to find the better husbands, the the better Bill and Ted's. In the end, it kind of turned out that well, that was also weird at the end, where they the wives just appeared there and yeah. Anyway, but but I think that had an influence. I don't know. It's just my interpretation. Who knows? I'm guessing that the two year, five year, ten year, whatever future bill and ted's they were like they really did have their lives messed up because they didn't write the song and their wives left them and so everything crumbled but then by the time they i don't know by the time they went to the future that far forward into this to see them old their old selves their wives had started to realize that they were right for them i don't know (laughs) and if time and space ends if they don't play the song in 77 minutes how is there a future self of them in two years that has not written the song dude bill and ted (laughs) we're not uh, i know and for some reason i don't care about these things in the old movies but in this one like i had trouble following it because i'm like none of this makes any sense even remotely yeah, I think it's like it doesn't make any sense in the first two. Just gotta roll with it. It's Bill and Ted. Yeah, and that's for, coming for from some me, reason. I I'm could usually... forgive it in the first two, and in this one, it just confused me. That's fair. Well, it's, well, it's also funny is there's basically no time travel in the second one. Very, I mean, very that's little. That's true. That's compared true. to the first and third. Yeah, um, just with like Rufus and them, but yeah, and then yeah. they go, yeah, very little. They went to the past in the first. They died in the second. This one, they had to go forward and. Uh, and also die again. So it was good. I don't know. I thought it was good overall. I can't think of anything else um, remarkable that stands out. But uh, yeah, I think that's. A but I liked good... it. Yeah, I did like the daughters. I thought they were a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I didn't think I would like them originally, but then I actually they were charming, and I did like them. I agree. I don't know what I was thinking either. I was like a little skeptical of seeing like mini Bill and Ted's, but yeah, they they both did a really good job, and they they worked mm-hmm. their charm. Well, if, I mean, I'll be honest. At first, yeah, I was they like, they weren't quite I'd... as dumb as their dads. Yeah. Well, <laughs> at first, I just thought I do not like this because they were like acting so similar to Bill and Ted. They were, they were, they were, they were quirky like 
Bill and Ted, but they're also their own per- people while they're trying to go into the past and find. I think just the fact that they were trying to also bring these musical figures forward and stuff, I think that helped to make them kind of their own characters, not right. just not just replicas of their parents. So Yeah, I agree. I the princesses were played by different actresses again. Every movie they've been different. Oh, I didn't realize that. Just an interesting note. Yeah. Hmm. That's too bad. And last last thing I'll say about it, each of these movies have pretty much been spot on an hour and a half. And I kinda like that. Like yep. you kind of you can only take so much of just this silly goofiness and I think I think that's a good uh, good limit there. Yeah. An hour and a half. I agree. So yep. oh, they don't one, one of the them. best one of the best parts was that we opened at Missy marrying yet another member of yeah. their families, oh, wow. marrying Ted's younger brother Deacon. That was pretty awesome. I was that like, was amazing. If Missy wasn't in this one, I would have been pretty upset. So I was. I was, that. I was actually thinking that when I watched Bogus Journey, I was like, okay, they, like what's Missy's role going to be in this yeah. new one? And I'm, they don't, they didn't waste any time getting to that. That's that was the big elephant in the room. Yep. Yep. It was cute. All right. Well, uh, overall, 10 out of 10 uh, from all three of us. Great work, <laughs> Bill and 10 Ted. 10 stars. <laughs> yeah. Um, cool. I think that about wraps it up. Thank you, guys. Uh, be sure to follow us, like, and subscribe on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. Subscribe on YouTube. Um, all, all of those are at the couch board. Let us know your thoughts on Bill and Ted and uh, Face the Music and explain the time paradoxes that we just cannot wrap our heads around you can write in at the couchboard at gmail.com all right that about wraps it up for us thank you very much have a good night bye see ya